hi guys welcome back to my channel in this video i showed how to make this um off shoulder princess that ruffle neckline like this is a really long name but i showed how to make this beautiful blouse and i really love it you can see i was already <laughs> catching funny fever here and dancing funny anyways let's just go into the tutorial so what i did i used my chalk these are the things i used my chalk my scissors my measuring tape i think i used a ruler yeah i used a ruler but i didn't show it here so what i did here starting with creating the ruffle i folded my fabric into two and on a fold of two i marked six inches on a fold of two i marked six inches and i did this across the entire length of the fabric so on a fold of two i'm marking six inches which means by the time i open up the fabric i will have 12 inches as the width of the fabric as the length of the fabric rather the width i made my width up to 70 inches because the measurement of my overarm is 40 inches and i needed like extra 30 inches to create the ruffle so i made sure the length was up the width was up to 70 inches and my length was 12 inches so when i was done with this cutting out the strip next thing i did was i folded it and kept it aside now to create the the bodies for this um blouse i took my blouse length at 23 inches I took my blouse length at 23 inches and I did this across the entire length of the fabric. You want to make sure everything is precise and you know put together. When I was done with that, I went ahead to cut out the excess fabric I didn't need. Then from the side, from the side, I measured 1.5 inch for my zip allowance. I folded it and I secured it with a pin. So I just wanted to show you like the preliminary I did before cutting the princess that this is just a basic princess that a tutorial on how to cut a princess that is up on this channel I'll leave a link to that video in the description box in case you need a detailed tutorial on how to cut a princess that here I was just showing you what I did and how I folded it so you don't get confused so this is how to cut it this is the princess that, that I cut like I said the link to how I cut the princess that will be in the description box so here is my strip so this is what we'll be working with for this tutorial so for my strip that was that i used to create the ruffle i took it over to my ironing table and i put some paper stay i put some paper stay in the middle this paper stay the width of the paper stay was about um, four to five inches but just according to what you want Sha. so this is my paper stay and i used a dry iron to attach this to the fabric if you want to know the kind of iron i'm using i'm using a binatone dry iron so i just took my time to attach the paper stay to make sure everything is well laid then the next thing i did was i just took my princess dart that i called and joined them side to side like i joined the front side to the this the sides of the front to the center also the sides of the back to the center as well 
I know when you are sewing your princess that around those curves you have to take your time to sew it even though you are just going to get it all wrong so this is what I did here see I got to towards my armhole and I backstitched this is what it, the front looks like when I've joined the sides to the center and this is what the back looks like so this is the front this is the back So to the back, this is my zip. I'm just going to attach my zipper to the back bodies. Then I'll go ahead to join the sides. So I've already attached the back zipper to the back to the blouse and I joined the sides, marked up my measurements and joined the sides. So for the blouse, I'm going to have sort of like a strip or sort of like an off shoulder sleeve that is going to sit you know below my shoulders so i'm just trying to create a strip here and the width of this strip is eight inches when i was done cutting it i shaped it out and i folded it into two folded the remaining strip into two and placed the one I cut before on top of it. This is because I'm trying to cut the facing for the strip of the sleeve, the off shoulder strip of the sleeve, if you understand what I mean. You see where I'll attach it so it will all make sense finally. So this is the main piece, the two main piece and the facing. So for the strip, I placed it on my ironing table and also attached some paper stay. Is this a paper stay or a gum stay? Attached some paper stay to it to give it this firm and you know, to give it a firm um, look. When I was done with that, I took it over to my sewing machine and I joined the facing to the main piece. Now the main piece is going to be the one bearing the gum stay or the forcible interface, whatever you're using. So I just joined it, top stitched. Now this place I'm top stitching and turning over is going to be the bottom of the sleeve. Why the part where I just stitched on top is going to be where the ruffle is going to lie over. Like this place I'm joining right now is where I'm going to attach the ruffle from my neckline over my shoulder lines too. So when I was done with that, what I did here was I just took the strip, used a pin and attached it to my armhole. You can see that that place I turned over is what is at the bottom of the sleeve. Why the place I just top stitched and left it raw is where it's going to form my i don't know how to call it shoulder line now or neckline my off shoulder line yeah so i secured both strips for both um, sleeves with an office pin or two office paints then I went over to my sewing machine and I joined it to the blouse When I'm done with that, I'm just going to turn over. When I'm done with joining this strip, I'm going to turn over the armhole with a bias. So I took it over to my sewing machine and I attached the strip, the off shoulder strip to my armhole. Then I went over and used my bias to turn over the armhole and I did this so that the armhole won't just be left naked and untamed 
I turned it over with a bias because I wanted everything to look clean and precise and you know put together. Don't crucify me for using white bias, I beg. This is the only one I had at home. So when I was done with joining it, I just turned it over and top stitched. You'd want to take your time when you're doing this because it needs to align properly. So this is what it looks like when I was done attaching the strip and turning over the armhole. It's now time for the ruffle. So you guys know I already attached the paper stay to the ruffle. Then with my elastic band, this is like half an inch of elastic. I'm just going to attach the elastic, sew the elastic to the center of the piece. I'm going to pull the elastic and sew it to the center of the piece. So is is this elastic that creates that ruffle effect that you that you saw on the blouse? When I was done with that, I folded it into two equal halves as it was before and I just joined it together. When I was done joining, the next thing I did was to attach the ruffle to the shoulder line or the off shoulder line of the blouse. Now I joined my zip to attach this ruffle to the blouse i'm going to loosen that part where the zip is going to sit on on the ruffle and put the ruffle that way and just sew the zip on top what i'm trying to say is i loosen my zip sewed the ruffle and attached the zip on top of the ruffle you see what i what what i did like i don't know if my explanation is making sense so what i did here was i just attached the ruffle to the blouse and pleated it like I will secure with a pin and do some pleats because obviously the ruffle is bigger than the overarm measurement or the shoulder line measurement. So what I did here was I already have an excess and I want it to be full. So I'm just going to fold and pin, fold and pin. It was actually, it took a while to arrange it, which I didn't really show here on the video. But what you should do is you fold and you pin, you fold and you pin. So this is what it looks like when I was done folding and pleating and pinning. The next thing I did was I took it over to my sewing machine and I joined it along those axes. Yeah, I made a straight stitch along those axes. And for my zip, this is what I was trying to explain. I had to loosen it so that I can fit the ruffle in. When I'm done, I'm going to attach the zip back on top of the ruffle. I didn't know my camera cut me off, but I just hope you really understand what I was trying to explain there. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to sew the zipper now on the ruffle. Understand? Yeah. So I took it over to my sewing machine and I attached the ruffle to my blouse with a straight stitch. Because I had pleats in between, I had to take my time to make sure everything sat in well and precise and cool. I don't know why I've been using cool in this tutorial. When I was done with that, I attached the zip on top of the ruffle. This is what I've been trying to explain to you. When I was done attaching the zip and the ruffle to the blouse, what I did here was I cut a long strip and I used it as a facing to turn over the neckline of the blouse. Just a very straight stitch, a very straight um, st strip that's about 1.5 inch in width. So I just attached it to the neckline. When I was done attaching it to the neckline, the next thing I did was I turned it over 
and I top stitched to make you know what top stitching does to a dress now it makes it relax it makes the facing relax and you know it just makes the facing relax I don't know what I'm saying you know <laughs> so that's what I did here when I got to where my zipper was I did a back stitch. I didn't really sew on top of the zipper. I did a back stitch just before the zipper. When I was done with that, I took it over to my ironing table and gave it a really good press. I gave it a really, really good press with my steam iron so it would be relaxed. There's nothing like having, like, it's so annoying when you have a puffy neckline. So I gave it a really good press. I did it across the entire neckline, the entire shoulder line, whatever I want to call it. So for you to sew the ruffle to determine the length of your overarm, which is like your off shoulder, you have to measure it out. Mine is 40 and that was what I worked with. So this is the outcome of the blouse like i so love this blouse if you watch this video up to this point and you are not yet subscribed like what are you waiting for subscribe join the family for more awesome tutorials this is how it looks like i really love the outcome and i'm going to make another one try it out if you love it those things puffing out <laughs> are the is the facing i have not i have not hemmed it at that point i was just too excited to show you guys what it looks like so thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and come back for more awesome tutorials